Okay, can everybody hear me? All right, um, did everybody get out of this? Because it's flipping. <coughs> well, not flipping, but I mean, it had a big pushback. So it pushed back basically through the entry, retested the high. It still looks good if you want to do it again, but again, Friday, bullish market, all these things, you know, that was it. If you held it down to the bottom there, it was a nice trade. Um, and just going over this again, uh, really wasn't even sure if this was the open. Anyways, I still, I still, I'm not sure if this was. This really looks like it is with the volume. Anyways, we did it. Boom, got the drop. Wherever you got out in here and here, it was a nice trade. Um, and again, first target, second target, bullish market, morning move. It's a no-brainer. No-brainer that you got to get out, or at least to get out of, you know, 75% of the trade. Because even if you think it's going to a bigger number, you can always retake it. And it was a good gap, so it worked. Very happy. Any questions about GME before we go to the next thing? <clears throat> I guess you guys didn't do anything yesterday. I, never, I didn't talk to Gerard. He must be busy. Um, so I didn't know what the situation was. Did email about two trades on, what was it, Thursday afternoon? Tuesday afternoon. I've lost track. AYI did end up working out really good if you did it once or, or twice on Tuesday. Um but I took it easy yesterday. So I'm glad this worked. And it really was the only thing to watch. It looks like it's setting up again. Um, SPY is higher. So I call the SPY to do the 280 options. We're gonna just go right there. I think we go right there. I saw yesterday within, within the week that I call the option. So super cheaply priced. I mean, really incredibly priced. And if I had seen this earlier yesterday, I would have called it probably out in the open, but I, I wasn't up and looking at charts. And then after I did the mentoring session with Mark Mobile, I saw it and I said, holy crap, I'm just gonna call it because we're gonna just go right there. And I mean, I just have 100% conviction. And in fact, I emailed the TV people. I'm like, we're just gonna go right there. And we're gonna go to 26,000, which is what everyone talks about in the down. I said, we're just gonna go right there. We could even get there today, look at this. So what a, what a great call. What a great call, and I had the conviction to email the TV people that would happen, and then after I did it, I sent the letter out to everybody. Man, it's gonna work. So anyways, getting back to what I was saying, the gap yesterday, you could have actually day traded, and it wasn't easy to see, I saw it, but you know, if you didn't do anything yesterday, it was fine, it was a bullish day. Um, probably a, a, a tough day to short. I don't know what the picks were yesterday, but you could have gone on the market. You really would have had to hold it till it pushed up. Um, but once again, you see the strength involved in this chart. I mean, and it's it's about playing momentum. I mean, we play gaps, but what we're what the gap is itself is momentum that's coming into the stock in one direction or another. The momentum either comes up or the momentum comes down. Again, you can't buy every bullish gap and you can't short every bearish gap, but I definitely can see the ones where the momentum is coming in before it comes in early or even very easily. You could have seen this yesterday like I saw it when I looked at the chart at one o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, it was there. It was going to push on through. Um, this isn't the reason, but this gives me even more conviction. The reversal that we had here in the drop down that was on the 10th and then boom. I mean, so we're just continuing higher. And again, it's not that we're never going to pull back, but we're not going to pull back before we go to these numbers. And we're just so close now, we're going to go. So 280 in the SPY. I'm very happy that some of you did it. Um, this is going to take a little bit to get going but is really actually more bullish in the market. Again, you could have gone long Netflix yesterday in a gap up. This will continue as well. And 220 is such so close as well. So really 220, 225 for the targets for Netflix in the next week. SPY 280 is the target. See if it gets through it or not. Um, what else did I call? I even forget. Amazon, and what was the other one I called? I called Amazon. Oh, Google. Google was super, super, super cheap. How much are you up in this Galahad? This was so freaking cheap. 
And I called it right at the strike. It was out yesterday, and I couldn't believe how cheap it was. I was like, I mean, and, and it's interesting. I was talking to some of this about this yesterday. I was like, you know what? I've never seen these things so cheap. And she looked at them. She's like, oh, my God, they are cheap. It's almost like people don't think they're going to go there. So, but the, the, they are. Um, it was almost like people don't expect that these things will go higher. And yet they are. This was so cheap for an at the money call in Google a week out. I mean, I was like, really? Dubaz is in Google. All right. You want to know if you should stay in these ones here. First of all, this is moving up higher strikes 1300. This is going to be probably the biggest one. You want to, you want to go with the market. You want to time is with the market. So I'm going to speak to Galahad's difficulties here because someone said, oh, good job getting out of GME. He doesn't have a problem getting out of day trades. He has a problem getting out of the options trades when he's up. And you could have gotten out of this, uh, that Amazon this morning, 1800 profit Galahad. But I want you to learn something. Some trades are better than others. Actually, I was talking about that with Mark Mobile. Some trades you want to hold. Some trades you don't. You got to learn which and you got to learn when. If you see the market here climbing, 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 it's just starting to get going here with this. You got this moving up crazily. This tells you when the market starts to go crazily, this is going to continue too. So you want to go things with them. If the market's helping you, you don't have to get out. If you don't have the help of the market, that's a different story. And, you, and, the, and the challenge for most people is learning the difference. This is, these are all good calls and you can hold them. You could look for an exit to get out of all of them the same day when big, fat, massive green bars with the market. And that's where you want to exit whenever that is. It could be today. You got to watch your trades now. I wouldn't be surprised if it is today. It might be next week. It might be today. I forgot the market was closed Monday. But either way, and you may not want to hold these in, you know, past tonight because the market is closed Monday. But I'm just saying that not every trade is created equal. This was a quickie today. Fine, good, made money. Wasn't something I would have wanted to hold down to 17. Why? Good gap, not insanely good. Okay. Decent move for the stock down to 18. Doesn't normally move something crazy anyways. Extremely bullish market. Market gapping up. Not earning season yet. Don't have a lot of even gapping down at all. I mean, this, you got to understand, like, some things you do, you do it, but you don't want to hold it. And, you ha and that takes experience and learning if you don't know. Here, look at this. This swung around. This scooped around. It's going to go over the high again. So you, and when you're looking for exits in your trades, you can have, this is day trades or options. You have two, you can, you have, here, look at this. Oh, my Atlanta here. I don't even know where this is going to go. Let me, let me tell you where this is going to go because I don't even know. 1325, 1310, definitely over 1300. 1325, that would be sick. What would that be worth? Here, let's look at it. That would be a sick trade. So Galahad, see, this is where your problem is. You want to stay in everything. If you make a crap load of money on this, like 10 grand or something, then you want to hold every trade for 10 grand. No, you can't. You cannot. You have to pick the good ones. First of all, there's nothing wrong with getting out of early. There's nothing wrong with getting out of all these trades right now. But I'm saying you may as well take advantage of the good ones when you get it. But it's not every trade. Here, let me look. What is next week? Okay, 12 and 8. Let me just see the closest thing here at the money. Man, this is such a good call. 1295, which we're basically at at the money around, let's I'm just estimating 13 will be the sale price. So let's say 1275, about 25. <laughs> so this option, I'm just estimating this here with what I know. At 1325, actually 1320. At 1320, this could be worth 25 bucks. So you do the math. For those of you that have it, I'm not saying it gets there today. That could that could that may entail holding it next week. But who the heck knows? <laughs> so Turnal, um, you know, it's up to you if you want to hold it or not. I didn't know about the holiday. Um, you're looking to time these things right with the market. They all look good. You could play all these out into the close today. That would be fine. Netflix is even going to go too. That wasn't even late. Um, so you've got to learn what trades to hold and what trades not to hold.
And you can have two choices for exits. You look at the money you're up, the risk to reward, or you look for a target. But I think you gotta combine both. You gotta combine target and money. Those are the goals. You can't just look at the target and want it to go to a certain target, because it may not. And then if you're up a certain amount of money, you don't get out, you're screwed and you could lose in it. And that's your problem, Galahad. You always wanna go to a certain target. And some of your targets are way too big for some of the things that you're wanting to haul. But I mean, you do have to pay attention to the money that you're up. I'm very happy that you're making money in these trades, Galahad. Don't let it get away from you. But I think you gotta give this Amazon at least to 1300, at least to 1300 here, you know, which could be today. But the big number for this is 1320, 1325. Um, <coughs> this is definitely going to uh, 1115. It's going to go there today. Uh, 1120. I mean, this is going to be another massive trade. So you want to time all these things with the market. Turtle's up a boatload already. Turtle, I think, did you say you did them all? How much are you up, Turtle? I guess two people in here only did them all. Turtle and Galahad. I don't know what that was. Hold on. Oh, Shower Singer did them all. Congratulations. Great. All right, Shower Singer, where are you getting out of them? Since we're having the discussion. Does it seem like Martin Luther King is early this year? I always thought it was like the third week of January. No wonder I didn't think it was. I thought it was later. Um, anyways... The, going back to what I was talking about, about <coughs> momentum, we play gaps, but they work so well because it tells you where the momentum is coming into the stock, so you're playing the momentum. You're not playing the pullback, you're playing the momentum, okay? And that is very, 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 very important. Why? Because that's how you're going to get paid, Okay. Any questions from anyone about anything? But gaps work so well because momentum is coming into the stock. It's either buying or selling. And it's either the buying that gives the stock a lift, which creates the momentum up, or the selling or shorting, which creates pressure on the stock that it sells off and moves down. But we play momentum. That's really what we do that comes in in gaps, not pullbacks. When you think about it conceptually, and you're buying into a pullback, you're actually buying against what the stock is already doing. It's coming down and you're buying into it falling because you really don't know, even if it sets up, even if it does a buy setup or a sell setup, if that one's gonna hold particularly there. It may drop, break, fall, break the pivot, set up again. That's why it's so much cleaner. I mean, the trading gaps, if you know how to do it like I taught you, is a lot cleaner way to trade for entries, for getting the immediate profit right away as soon as you take a trade, not having to suffer being down as soon as you take it. And that's why I pretty much said, listen, you take these trades, if you're down half, just get, get, get the heck out right away in these options because they really should go immediately. When I see something, if it doesn't play out right away and you're down half like in the first day or two, I would just kill it. Because there's uh, usually when I see it, it's gotta go immediately or very close to immediately. <laughs> It is the third Monday of the 15th. Oh, geez, I didn't know that. Shower Singer's out of Google. That's perfectly fine. What did you make in this one here? Somebody asked me, Dave asked me about, was it Dave or Dan? No, Dan asked me, Dan, are you here about uh, Apple? Let's see if Dan's here or not. Um, no, I don't think he is. Dan asked me about Apple. I didn't call Apple because I don't think the chart looks as good as, as the other ones. It's been lagging. Well, look at this. You made 500 bucks. Good. Actually, this doesn't look half bad here today, but it still doesn't look as good as the others. 
So, I mean, this has been lagging. Uh, even this is going to go. I'm not crazy about Disney Galahad because this is can't make up its mind here and probably doesn't get going until something else happens with the buying Fox. Um, it had this big move and it dropped. Then it had a big move and it dropped. Then it had a big move and it dropped again. Um, again, don't buy the pullbacks. You're, you've gotten into a habit of doing that. It's a bad, bad habit. You should get back into the habit of doing the things that I taught you, which clearly are working in the trades here that you did that I called. You did two on your own, and I don't like this. And in fact, I think it's going to lose. This is can't make up its mind here. I think you leave it be. The stock is in an uptrend, yes, but I don't see any option trade to tell you it's going to go right there. At the, here, that, that's, here, that's what it is. Here, this is how you make money. When you see something here, this is going again. Did anybody do it on your own? I did not make an official second call on this, but here you go. Mark Mobile, you could have done this. We're talking about when you do the second ones. You could have done this. Here it is in the five, the 15 minute. You could have done it. Mark, are you listening to me? You could have done that one, but it might not have set up again. Why? Bullish market. Da, 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 da. But you could have done this if you really wanted to do this. On the second call here. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I forget what I was going to say. Shoot. Oh. Oh, you did it in your head. Okay. No sound? I'm talking. <coughs> Can everybody hear me? Oh God, now I just forgot I was gonna say my brain is like a fuzz ball. That's the other reason I want to get out early today. Um oh, I know. So you have to be able to see that it's gonna to go to a certain number in the time of the trade. The time of the trade could be 15 minutes, five minutes, a half an hour. In the case of a day trade, you want to get in a trade and you have to be able to take it and see it's gonna to go to a certain place before the end of the day, because day trades you gotta be out before four you got really till four but i don't want to hold till four ever but i'm just saying you need to be able to see it's going to go to a certain number within the time you have to take the trade to get out that you've got to get out you've got to get out of the day trades before four and you've got to get out of this before next friday <laughs> Anyways, um, so if you can see, you have to be able to see this going to get to a certain number within the time. If you can't see that, like this, there's no way to see that here. Could this get to 113, which was the previous high first target? Yes. <laughs> can I see that it will by today, by tomorrow, by next week? No, I can't see when this is going to get there. Someday it might. But I, the gap today doesn't tell me it's going to go there at any set day. Gap yesterday didn't. They were bullish gaps. That's true. This is a bullish chart. Market's bullish. True. But there's nothing here in the gap in Disney per se that tells me that Disney's going to get to 113 by any set time. So the, the trick, it's not a trick. I mean, it's, it's, it's a skill set. The skill set, that's the right word. The skill set is being able to see that the momentum is going to take it, take the stock to a certain number within the time frame you got to get out, that you're going to play it, whether that's a day trade or whether that is, um, whatchamacallit, uh, a week. Just like last week, was it Netflix? Yeah, it was Netflix last week. Or no, it was two weeks ago now. I don't even remember. Whatever the day the second was on this one here was a good trade. <clears throat> this one here, I could see that the momentum was gonna take that puppy up in a day for me to do it for a day. So I ended up, you know, doing the one for the Friday. But you could have, you, this is the original trade I still called and this is still on. Is anyone in the original first Netflix? Cause holy crap, that was this, you know, just ride that out too. The original Netflix I called was out till next Friday. But if you can see that it's going to go to a certain number, you could do it as a day trade. You actually could have day traded Amazon today. You could have done it. You could have bought Amazon into the open today, but 
if you didn't, it's too late. But I'm just saying, here, this is, here, 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 let's just watch it. I would kill the Disney. I don't like it. You're doing things on your own. I'm not against it, but I really think you need to be following me because you're having some issues. This looks okay too, but this is an ideal. <coughs> I don't know, people. I'd say maybe you got to take all these off today. Just, I, just because of Martin Luther King, everything looks crazy strong. It's 1014. I think they're all going to go. I think today they're all going to have a decent enough green bars. It's not to say they don't continue next week, but I, I'm like looking at these now and I'm thinking it's not worth it. It's not worth sweating the bullet for three days, being off on Monday to hold them into next week. You don't have enough time and we very well could continue, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday, but we could take a break Tuesday, continue Wednesday, Thursday, and you're getting out the day before and you're going to be, everybody's going to be up a lot of money in these today. So I think with the hot, these are still going. It's 10.15, look how early it is. We're power trending up today. So I think everybody should watch their trades today and get out by 4-4. That's my professional advice. You're all going to be up. I forgot about Martin Luther King. We are closed Monday, I guess. What are you up, Galahad? Don't you dare, you know, not profit from these. And then also, Galahad, don't throw all the profit that you're up today, whatever you make, in another, just don't throw it all into another trade right away. Sometimes you, sometimes you get so anxious that you're up, you just want to throw it all into another trade. Just take a breather. Take a break. Let yourself, this is what I was saying to Mark too yesterday, get, spend some of the money. Get, reward yourself. Take it out, even if you don't need it. Take out 500 bucks. Give yourself a, a chance to feel good about yourself that what you did, you're up. Let yourself feel the money. Mark Mobile said yesterday, he, he, sometimes it doesn't feel like it was real when he was up last year. You got to make it feel real. And if spending it's the only way to make it feel real, then spend it. Yeah, you're right. We are closed. <coughs> so Citigroup is Tuesday morning. God, I just feel like I lost like two weeks of my life here being sick. Uh, Goldman Sachs is Wednesday. AA is Wednesday night. Yeah, so earnings season officially starts next week. But I think the week of the 22nd is when we get, like, just a crap load of ones. Let me just look here. Yeah, starting, the earnings season starts next week. We do have things Tuesday morning, even though Wednesday, Monday, the market's closed. The week of the 22nd is when we have, like, 100 earnings a day. So that's when we really start to get going. So this is, today was good. And Gerard did do a good job running the room. You're up $3,900 in, in, in a combination of everything today, Galahad? Yeah, this is still higher. This is still higher. This is still higher here. You gotta watch them. <laughs> You gotta watch them, watch them, watch them. It gets tough. Oh, you're out of Google. I don't know why two of you got out of Google. I guess that you didn't want to hold the others, but Google, Google did not make the move like you know yesterday and the day before. You know. Any reason for the rally today? First of all, the market doesn't need a reason to rally. Second of all, the market really had a gap up yesterday that made me see these trades that I called. So the gap up in the market happened yesterday, which meant that we were going to go straight up, straight right up to the ne next number, the next target. Next target in the SPY is 280. Next target in the Dow is 216, where, or 260, where I look at it here in the, in the ETF, but it's really to, to, uh, 26,000 people talk about it. But to me, when I saw the gap yesterday, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if there's a reason there may have been economic data. I didn't look at it. But either way, I called this trade and saw it yesterday based on what? Based on the bullish gap based on the buying that was coming in, based on the nice steady incline that we've had that really is not something crazy. People saying, well, we're extended. This is just do, 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 do. It's just getting bought. Do, do, do. You know, that's what I'm saying. I mean, this isn't, this isn't even insane. I mean, the rally itself, if you look at the numbers, you're like, wow, we're very bullish. And yes, we power trended all year. 
But there's no insane green bars here. It's not you're like you're like, oh my gosh, you know, could that be the end? Anyways, you don't play tops either. But there's nothing here that makes you think that this is doing anything insane anyways, meaning like that there would come that it would come to an end. Like if you were in this, is what I'm saying, there would be no indicator here for you to take any money out. If you got a huge massive green bar one day, I'd say maybe, hey, you know, gets out of some. But there was, there's nothing even in the last, since the market opened this year, or anything even last year, where you say, oh gosh, you know, that looks like a huge, there, there's no big green, look at this. There's no huge, massive, big green bars in the SPY at all. At all, even all the way back last year. But yet the market was very strong. It's had a nice, steady support of buying. It's just a nice do do do. I mean, that is really very strong. It's not going crazy. Not that if it would go crazy, you should <coughs> you should get out. Okay, twelve ninety nine. So that was the morning exit for Amazon. If you didn't, if you can't sit all day and watch the trade, if you can't sit all day and watch the trade, and you can't hold it to next week, or you don't want to, that was the morning exit into ten fifteen for this stock. One dollar from the first target, you could have got out. I wasn't watching it the second, but that was the morning exit. Remember, these option trades are just like day trades. Got to watch reversal times. So I'm not saying it doesn't keep going here, but I'm saying that was the morning exit. If you can't sit all day, and this is just going. So anyways, I think it here, this is, look at this. That even went when I called it yesterday. That is crazy. Anyways, the, 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 you gotta start to look at charts. Like I'm calling these things, but I'm trying to explain it and it's hard to put words to it. It's hard to, it's hard to put words to it. I mean, I, it's like, I wish that I could find the right words. The, the momentum is the only word that I can find. I say institutional buying. Like, I wish that I could find the right words to explain what I see in a chart when I see that something's going to go to a certain number, which seems that it can't possibly happen at all. I wish there, there was a way for me to describe it better in words, but I can't. The only way that I can possibly say is the gap takes it there. The gap is so good that it's going to take it there. And that's what I saw yesterday for the SPY and all the trades I called, that the gap was so good that it's going to take it right there because it's the gap that makes it. So this was not a late call to go long the market. It wasn't late to go long the market to start out the year, which we started out very bullishly here, even in the SPY on the second. You know, you know, it's just, we're just going to go right there. Any questions? I think we're going to have a good year. Tuesday, I was not feeling well at all. What did this end up doing then? If you did these later trades, you made out okay in the day. What did this do this week? <coughs> Had a second move here, actually went to that 156 number. It it actually broke it, pushed back now. Oh, uh, what was I gonna talk about? Oh, this one here. Was it SBU? What was the one you guys did on Thursday or uh Friday or what was the day? Wednesday. Oh yeah, this was this one. Listen, Gerard told me about this day here, it was a rough entry. Looking back on this one here, I don't think, it, I think it opened late and it was very tricky and crazy hard. And, you know, he told me about it, but, I, you know, you, just, you could have retaken it. So hopefully everybody did retake it. He said he called it a second time, but I mean, this was crazy, crazy, just hard. I don't think it opened here. And that's why I was very cautious of that today. Volume, I don't think that was the open. You know, the volume here and the tally things, this looks like the open to me on this, 932. But, you know. If you did it here, you got stopped. You could take it again. Here's the drop. You could have even done it here. Boom. I went over this with Mark Mobile, but the po the problem is here though that I, I just don't think this opened right here. Maybe it did. It was tricky. You got to watch these ones. How do you know any of the ones that have the three three symbols? If it's only got three letters, those are the ones that typically are in that market that have a late open. So anything with three ticker symbols, got to be careful. And we were careful with the GME today. <coughs> So again, what are the lessons to be learned here? 
A, not every trade is created equal. Don't hold every trade to some massive target or even maybe the target itself. B, make decisions on exiting your trades based on two things of equal and greater value of the same. Money, you're up, target when this chart. They, it's, it's a 50% it's a and 50%. Your whole entire decision has to be based on equally looking at both. You can't ignore the money and you can't ignore the chart and you have to look at both. And in an ideal world, you're up a lot of money and it goes to the target, but that does not happen in every trade. And three, the next lesson is to play momentum and have conviction in doing that because it's the only way really I think that I think that you can make money day trading. <clears throat> I think the only way you can make money day trading is playing with momentum. Pullbacks do not work consistently. Um, and you're, you're usually down before you're up. And this looks higher. <laughs> I mean, this just looks higher. So <laughs> tricky with the Martin Luther King. I don't know what happens on Tuesday, how we got. It's like a million miles away, three days for the market, because there's other, other markets that will be open on Monday that could affect the market the way it gaps on Tuesday. So... Um, you know, KBH, oh, I thought you didn't do anything yesterday. Did you or did you not do anything yesterday? I'm confused. <coughs> Holy crap, that worked. Did you do it or not? Um... Do, uh, I need to do the bullish gap class this year. I haven't done it for a while and I absolutely have to do it. It's imperative that some of you take that class that haven't. And for those of you that have, you gotta retake it. Um, this this was good, let's look at it. Did you do it or not? Cause I thought, I thought I, I didn't talk to Gerard. I really, I, I, I texted him, I called him. He must be like out of the loop. Uh, let me look here. <coughs> See that, 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 look at that. Look at the volume there. I don't think that opened there. Boom. This is the open. So here, this didn't open at 930. This opened here. So let's look at this. Really nice move. What do you want to talk about it? Here you could have done it. Here you could have done it. You could have even done it here. This was a nice straight here. Why didn't you do it, Mountain Girl? Because I wasn't directing you or what? See, Mark Mobile, you could do this one here. Here's a secondary entry. Mark Mobile was saying he gets, you know, sometimes he misses the first entry. Well, that's okay. If it sets up too quick, you miss it. Do the second one, but still play the morning. You could do this here. Boop. You thought it was too late. What time did you see it? Here or here? Well, let's look at what the targets would have been because that'll help me. First of all, you had the market with you yesterday. And <laughs> yeah, 39, where did it go? It almost got to 39. 39 really was a dream target. It almost got there. 9.41 you thought was too late. No, 9.41 is not too late. But if you take a late entry here, you got to get out quick. So here if you took it, you could be in it, in it, in it. If you take it late, you got to get out quick. Um, I don't know if you rated this or not. What was this? Was it earnings or was it not earnings? Well, look at this one here. I just, I just, <clears throat> you know, just ha look at this. It's going to go to seven, 17.50. I found that if it broke 18, it would collapse today, but I had no idea what time that would happen. And I just had one goal today was to make money after I've been off so many days of being sick. Did anyone take this second trade here? Look at that. Mark Mobile, you did it. Good for you. For real, you did it or in your mind? You actually took a trade because I know you've been off for a while and you're trying to get back in the groove. <laughs> if you didn't rate KBH, you can go back and rate it. Um, 
You really shouldn't trade in and you don't read anyways. Did Gerard see that? Mark Mobile, you did do it. Excellent. That's so great. See? 1763. You're bar by bar in it now. It's got to the number. 1750 is the next target. Just bar by bar it. And here is the market. What a great call. I'm so glad some of you did these. I'm so glad. Well, clearly not all of you did. But I am very, and clearly this is going to go up to 1300 You better watch it now. This, clearly, not all of you did them. I, I really wish that some of you would have. I mean, that all of you would have. Sorry. I know some of you did. I wish all of you would have. Um, Turtle, what are you up now in all of these? I know you took them all. And Galahad, now, you got out of the Google. There's, I'm going to say one last thing. I'll let everybody go. There's nothing better than proving to yourself that you can do it. Okay. So you got to prove to yourself that you can do it. You got to prove to yourself that you can make money doing this. So it's great when I do it and I call the trades and we do it. And some trades don't work, but you have to learn when to be heavy handed and when not to be heavy handed. And I was a little heavy handed on Tuesday. I mean, I did a little bit too many trades. In the end, I pulled it around, but I mean, AYI may not have worked in the afternoon. It did, <laughs> but you know, the fact is that you gotta learn when to be heavy handed and when not to be. And if you don't know when that is, then stop after the first trade, no matter what. Just set that as your rule. You take one trade in the day, either works or it fails, and that's it. If you can't tell when to be heavy handed or not, or what trades to hold longer, or any of that stuff, or what trades to retake or whatever, even if I call things and you don't feel comfortable with it, then if you haven't learned that yourself yet, and you've been here long enough, not the new people, then you do one trade a day and stop. You still should do well. Even if I do a second trade and it works and the first one fails and you don't do it, you still should do well. You will have you know, small losses in number and you will get the trades that work like today. <coughs> you got off of the computer when Jamie retraced at 13, 1835, you got back below that so you didn't take the second trade. Well, that's okay, Koala Bear. Anyways, um, I don't know how I saw this yesterday, but I did. And I kind of have been holding myself back a little bit with some of the aggressive things I've been saying because, because I have been on TV and because, like, I don't know when it was. Yeah, it was before I was on TV on the 29th. And one of the things they wanted me to talk about was 2018. I don't have to give numbers on TV, and I didn't. But in my mind, I thought, gosh, you know, really, where do we go? And I just was, you know, erring on the side of conservative. And then I was talking to a friend last night, and I told him the calls I made yesterday, and I just said, we're going to go straight there. He said, I agree with you. Actually, someday I might hire him to work for me if the business grows, because he is a friend of mine, and he works in the investment industry now. And um, he uh, was one of the people that encouraged me to start my own business. He used to be in a trading room with me, and he, every day he would say, what are you watching, Melissa? He would follow my trades in the trading room. He was just a room member, and so was I. This was a million years ago. And every day he'd say, Melissa, what do you like? Melissa, what do you like? And we got to be friends. And he knew I had something special. And he um, never did my class because he went off on his own and did something else with his life. But someday he might come work for me. Anyways, he um, agreed with me that he thinks we're going straight there. And he said he thinks this spy can go to 300. I'm like, I, you know, I, I do too. But, I, I, you know, to say those things out like that, it seems so crazy. You know, people really then want to know when and this and that I mean it seems that it's going to happen I felt that it would I don't know if it's going to be by 12 31 18 but it, it looks likely now um, I felt that we would in 12 to 24 months get to the 300 and the spy um, and I also think the Dow hits 30,000 but I'm not saying that's this year either but 
I mean, it's, it's just so hard to look so far out then and give exact dates for things. That is the most tricky thing about it is the challenge of the time. But as far as day traders go or short-term option traders, we don't have to worry about it. I can see the long-term bigger picture of the market's bullish and where it's going to go, but I can't tell you exactly when it's going to hit that number. And I guess that's why I've stopped, you know, calling options trades long, long, long-term out. Although for those of you that were here back in 2014, 2014 at the end of the year, I took a spy call that failed. I lost in it. It was an option way far out. I lost in the trade. That's probably also why I never called anything out that long anyways. But at that time, I, what I saw was absolutely correct. And I even forget the ones that I looked at. It was so long ago. I think I have a video of it. I either looked at the January 2018. I think it was the January 2018 or 2019. I looked out. That was 2014 at the end of the year. I looked at the, I, I saw volume in the option chain at a certain number that was so obvious to me that that we were going to get to that number which was crazy and it was way 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 and the cost of it i remember was like around 30 cents does anyone remember galahad you might remember what was the actual ex expiration of the option because i know it was like the 300s or it was of the 290s and it, the expiration date i forget to look at it to compare it now i forget i might have a video online but i saw that four years ago three and a half but the trade i took went bust because it didn't go there because we fell to start the year in 20, 2015. And so I've never done a long-term option trade ever, ever again, ever since then. It's much easier to see where it's going to go right away in a day or a week. But, and then it's much easier for me to see in long-term. But to tell the time of the long-term is crazy challenging. And I just think it's better just to buy the market of swing trades. If I had gone on the market, just bought it, just, you know, took a couple hundred shares of the SPY, I would have been much better off. Much, much better off. And I would have lost. I would be up. I would be up a crap load of money. We really could get to these numbers today. So for all of you that are watching them, pay attention. Does anybody have anything else they want to say? <laughs> so I don't know how we close today. I'll do a video sometime, if not this morning, this afternoon. I'm going to rest. I'm so happy now. I have three days to get better. Pray I'm 100% by Tuesday. I'm glad we pulled it out here today. For those of you that did the second trade, you had an awesome day. And if anybody thinks or remembers that number, of, I would love to look up that option chain. I just, for some reason, I want to say, it was I want to say January 2018, which obviously is now, or it was January, or it was January 2019. Was it January 2019? <laughs> Wait, look, it was a spy. It would have been the end of the, well, it would have been the third week one. Let me just look, January 19. Oh, I just don't remember. I can't figure it out. All right, have a good weekend, everyone. Have a great, great weekend. Ride out these options trades. Congratulations to everyone. If you did this, you made money, great job. If you did this, you're up. If you did this, it's a big one. If you did this, got out, that's fine. If you did this, you were trying to ride this up to 220. Did it get there yet? Almost. Great job, people. Let's have a strong, strong first quarter earnings season. And uh, that's all I have to say. As of now, I'm here all next week. I've got, you know, no bookings that I know of, but I'm sure that they will call me because I said about the market and I was right. <laughs> Excellent. All right, have a good day, everyone.